My next guest, Louise, started smoking when she was 12 years old. That's right, she started smoking at 12. Now, Louise says smoking rules her life, and she wants help to quit this deadly addiction before it becomes a deadly diagnosis. Take a look. I have been smoking since I was 12 years old, so pretty much most of my life. I smoke a pack to a pack and a half a day. When I wake up in the mornings, I cough for probably the first half hour. When I was pregnant, I cut it down to three cigarettes a day, but that's as far as I could get. I am a nurse, and I was a nurse and a safety officer in Afghanistan. I have taken care of tracheotomy patients, and as a nurse, I know better. I do patient teaching on the hazards and risks, and then I go outside and smoke a cigarette. I have continued to smoke and starting to feel the effects of it. My grandfather died of lung cancer. He was a smoker. My dad has emphysema, and I guilted him into stopping smoking, and then I continued to smoke. Yeah, you gotta mm. quit, baby. Mm. You gotta quit. <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> no, they're not. My children begs me to quit. Pretty much everybody that knows me wants to help me quit. I've tried to quit smoking at least 20 or 30 times. I've tried the patch, the gum, medications, inhalers, and I always end up smoking again. I do know it'll kill me, but I have tried everything and I just can't quit. Please help. Okay, why did you start? I really don't know. I was, like I said, I was only 12 years old, um, but I did always have older friends and cousins around. Right. They smoked. I thought it looked kind of cool. What I was trying to look older. What point did you realize, uh, I'm out of control, I, can't, I, I couldn't stop if I wanted to? It really wasn't until I was in my later 20s. I always, well, actually, when I got pregnant, and I, the doctor said, you need to quit, mm -hmm. and I could only cut it down to about three a day, and I couldn't completely quit. Then I knew it had me. What's the longest you've ever gone without smoking? I managed to make it a year one time. You made it a year? I made it a year. Well, that's, that's good. You, <laughs> how did it feel after you My got... My lungs felt better. I had more energy, but I still I thought about it all the time for the entire year. That never got better. So would you say you kind of white-knuckled it for a year? Yeah. You never mm -hmm. got over the craving. You no. never got over the desire. No. All right. You've heard the saying you got to break habits. Mm -hmm. That's a real misnomer. See, we don't break habits. What we redo is we replace one behavior with a new behavior. If we take that away from you and we don't put something in its place, guess what happens? That pops back up. Yeah. Not some of the time, but all of the time. Now, Larie's grandfather died from lung cancer. Her father has emphysema from smoking, yet she still smokes every half hour of her waking day. If she's awake, every half hour. Her daughter, Natasha, wants her mother to put down the cigarettes for the sake of her future grandchildren. Look at this. I did recently just hear that my mother would quit smoking if she found out that I were pregnant. And Josh and I, my husband, we are planning to begin to start and have children. I love my mom and I don't want to hurt her feelings, but at the same time, I don't want my child, future child, to have to deal with smelling cigarettes or being around it. Mom, my biggest fear is that someday Brie, Elijah, and I are going to be standing around a hospital bed and you're not gonna be able to breathe. I love you and I hope that you can get some help. No matter what reason gets you to quit smoking, it is always a good idea. And here to help us learn more about the actual quitting is a real favorite of ours here at the Dr. Phil Show, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall. She's the chief medical officer of Pfizer, and she's like real smart about this stuff. So uh, can you help us understand why it's so hard to quit? Well, for starters, a lot of us think that it's just a habit, but it isn't just a bad habit. Smoking is an addiction, yes, it is. and we have to start treating it that way. So let me start by asking you, we heard what your daughter said about your motivation, yeah. but because this is such a hard addiction, you tell me, what would your motivation be? I really don't know. I, well, I've worked with pulmonary patients, cancer patients. I think I'm, and seeing these commercials lately, I'm really afraid of ending up like that and my family watching me die like that. I do not want that to happen. Let me ask you, when, because the use of addiction gets thrown around a lot, mm -hmm. 
but you're using it in the strictest sense of the word here, right? This is in, an addiction, psychologically, mm -hmm. physiologically, in every way, correct? The whole spectrum. All right. This is the real deal, okay. addiction. Maria's tried to quit smoking over 30 times and nothing has ever lasted more than one year. She's here to get help on how to really quit for good. Now, Dr. Frieda, she's been telling us that, first off, this is not just a, a habit, it's an absolute addiction. What advice can you offer someone that wants to quit? First, let me start with the, with the motivation because it has to be deep and it has to be real. Yeah. You can't wait to be a grandma to start. Right? You, you have yeah, to right. quit now yeah. in order to make it to be a grandma. And I want to share something with you about me. Um, my mother was a lifelong smoker, yeah. a lifelong smoker. She wanted nothing more than to be a grandma. Three years before my daughter, her first grandchild was born, she died suddenly of a stroke. She didn't make it to be a grandma. Yeah. And trust me, you, you really want to make it. I yeah. became a grandma four months ago. There is nothing better. Yeah. Tell me, is there oh. anything better? Right, There's listen. nothing better. So we're going to start with your motivation. Okay. And then we're going to say, you know, quitting, whether it's your first time or your 30th time, mm -hmm. is not easy. Remember, this addiction is a chronic, relapsing medical yeah. condition. So people need in many cases, and do better when they have a doctor to help them. So we have a quit list. These are things that your doctor will need to help put a plan together for you. So how many packs a day do you smoke for how long? A pack and a half for 33, 33 Ever. years. Forever. Forever, most of my life. And how many times you started to quit? About 30, okay. at least, probably at least 30. That's <laughs> Maybe a lot more. of times. Yeah. And then we want to get to the methods that you've used and what the barriers are. These are the things that you were talking about earlier. What keeps you in that addiction mode? And then last but not least, the reasons that you want to quit now. You know, I think when people, you say that it, it works better with a doctor, you know, sometimes people just kind of go in there and they're passive patients. You don't want to be a passive patient. This is, this is what I love uh, about GetHealthyStayHealthy.com is it's got action-oriented things on it. If this is something you're really committed to and you acknowledge it's an addiction, huge. Oh, it is. I mean, that, that's huge. It's not just a behavior, it's an addiction. And so we want to start today. Okay. And because it's an addiction, what we want to do is to look for a tobacco specialist for you. Okay. Sometimes they're in your area. If not... There's often a lot of resource mm -hmm. online or on the phone, so we can make sure that you get connected to that. Right. And then also on GetHealthyStayHealthy.com, we have some other information for you to help you get started. Okay. But it's really all about today. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now, this, you're, you're talking about GetHealthyStayHealthy.com, and that's not my website, that's y'all's. But there's real information on there about okay. this, and, and I want you to take a look at that. But Hear what Dr. Fried is saying here. This is subject to relapse. It may not be a success-only journey, but you know what? Yeah. If it's four days and you stumble, then you get back mm -hmm. up and you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. You do yeah. it until, because you're poisoning yourself every day oh, until you do. And so that's critical. All right, I'd like to thank all of my guests today, especially Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall. Uh, for more information on today's show, you can visit drphil.com. We'll see you next time.